Studio Hire Module 1, Unit 4. Quelle soirée, which means, do you know what it means? Quelle soirée? What an evening, what an evening. Um, quelle, with something after it, is normally water, so quel dommage, what a pity. Um, quel plaisir, what a pleasure. Quelle horreur, what a horror. Um, quel homme, what a man. Quelle femme, what a woman. You're going to be doing describing a night out with friends and using the perfect tense. That's the passé composé in French. So in the previous units, we've done what you normally do, what you're going to do, and now this is what you have done. So let's look at the overview. As I say, describing a night out with friends using the perfect tense, or le passé composé, the composed past. This is within the theme that we're doing, and the theme is free time activities. Um, so I like that. It's the perfect tense and getting the perfect tense correct. And here's the key language. Now, all of this is something that you will have done in year nine, or you'll set, or you've actually you've done it right back year seven, eight, nine. You've touched on this um, and done it in quite a lot of detail, probably. But it's the sort of thing where with tenses, I think you just need to keep on revising them, coming back to them. So um, it may be that some of you don't need to do as much a revision as others. I'll go through this, but at any point when it, I'm talking about the perfect tense, if you think, well, I know this already, you can just skip that and go on to something else. If you need to look into, into it in more detail, I'll be giving you some extra work for that. You'll have already been taught how to form the perfect tense, and it may well be that you have heard songs or you've had poems or you've had various raps or something like that to make you remember it. Say, remember it. Um, I have to confess that it's only recently that um, I've noticed this song, and in fact it's in the studio resource itself, in the teacher guide, that they suggest that we play this to you, and I've only just noticed it. And I think it's an absolutely brilliant song for remembering the structure of the perfect tense. I'm just going to play you a little bit about it, a little bit of it now, and see whether or not you can hear what the perfect tense verb is. Tu So did you hear any of those words? You should have heard three words. I'm about to show them to you now, and then you can listen to it while you hear them. And um, had he stolen the orange? What did he say? I think you probably heard him say, non. And you might like to watch the whole thing. Um, I'm just going to show you the beginning of a version where the person who sang it is performing it in a really theatrical way. I love it. So I've entitled this slide as it being un peu plus dramatique, a bit more dramatic. So what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen? So in the next bit, you hear the fact that he's saying, no, no, I didn't. I didn't 
I didn't steal the orange. And there are people who are criticising him of stealing it and saying horrible things to him. And I wonder whether you can work out what any of the words are. We'll just listen to it a little bit. <laughs> So if you want to see what all that meant, um, I can give you the script of that. It's really easy on the internet nowadays. But I think in the old days, you had to just listen to it and listen really carefully, then write out all the words. And now you can just go onto the internet. And if you look particularly at something called Lyrics Translate, it's brilliant. Um, often you'll find that people have put in their own translations. And in fact, it's something that I've done as well. Sometimes if there isn't a translation in English, I'll do one and then I submit it. And it's quite nice to have people say thank you. So, um, And this particular one, it might seem a bit really weird. But in the end, it's quite moving, actually, because it, to me, it really is the idea of perhaps a young boy being accused of stealing an orange because of the way that he looks and the way that he acts. And uh, it, it, there's a weird sort of feeling about it. So what we saw was then people saying, you've stolen it, him saying, no, it's not me. Um, and then him saying, yeah, actually, what I was doing was that I was... Je courais dans la montagne. I was running on the mountain, regardant tout le, tout le temps, tout le temps, looking, watching all the time, les étoiles dans les yeux, the stars in the eyes. So um, do take a look at it if you'd like. Page 16, exercise 1. Reading. Lisez l'article, read the article, et choisissez la bonne option pour compléter chaque phrase and choose the correct option. Bon means good, and it also has the sense of correct. La bonne option to complete each chaque, each phrase. La première rencontre. So you've got your book, so you'll be able to see these clearly there. Um, if for any reason you're just doing it from the screen, then we can do it section by section. So for the first five, you'll have your answers here. And for the last four, the answers are here. So here's for the first five. I'll leave it there and when you're ready for the answers, resume. Answers coming up now. Donc Cédric a rencontré Amélie plusieurs fois, several times, or pour la première fois. Alors la réponse c'est pour la première fois. How do we know that? Quite straightforward, really, because it actually had the word première. It was the first meeting, la première fois. Plusieurs means several. And it doesn't change. It's always just plusieurs. It's always got an S on the end for plusieurs fois. Fois means times. Une fois, once, deux fois, twice, trois fois, three times. Uh, numéro deux. Cédric aime ou n'aime pas Amélie, mais... Amélie aime ou n'aime pas Cédric? La réponse est que Cédric aime Amélie, mais Amélie n'aime pas Cédric. 3. Ils sont allés à une exposition ou à un match de football. They go to an exhibition or a football match. Ils sont allés à une exposition. 4. Est-ce que c'était Cédric ou Amélie qui est entré dans le pub? Cédric est entré dans le pub. Et 5. Le premier restaurant était un restaurant cher ou un fast-food? La réponse, c'est le premier restaurant était un restaurant cher. Let's go to the final four. So if you need to, you can pause and do them now. Answers coming up now. Amélie a trouvé le fast-food excellent ou nul? 
Amelia trouvé le fast food nul, she found that it was awful, useless. À la fin de la soirée, at the end of the evening, Amélie est partie en bus ou a embrassé Cédric. Elle est partie en bus. So she went off on the bus. She didn't embrace Cédric. Cédric est tombé amoureux ou dans le bus. Cédric fell in love or he fell in the bus. I like this one. Cédric est tombé amoureux. He fell in love, of course. Et neuf, pour Amélie, c'était une soirée fabuleuse ou désastreuse. For her, it was a disastrous evening. So hopefully you've answered those correctly, which shows that you've got the gist of it, even though we haven't translated every single word. Page 16 grammar, the perfect tense. So you use the perfect tense to talk about the past. It's formed of two parts. The auxiliary verb, the part of either avoir or être, and the past participle. So here's an example. Je, je ai mangé becomes j'ai mangé. So you've got the pronoun, normally j-e, but because it's followed by a vowel, j apostrophe, j'ai mangé. And then the a is the avoir, and the manger is the bit called the past participle. It means I ate. If a verb takes être, then it's je suis entré. Je suis entré, I entered. Literally, I am entered. And for verbs with être, what happens? You can see there's an E in brackets after the je suis entré. Why is that? It's because for those verbs, the past participle must agree with the subject. So, je suis entré, if it had been a female who wrote that, je suis entré, you'd have to have the extra E. wouldn't be in brackets. Um, if you had several people saying we went, nous sommes allés, and it was a mixture of Men and women, or it was just men, it would be nous sommes allés with an extra S. Now, if you look at page 212, you can see this in much more detail. Page 212, the perfect tense. This goes into a lot of detail. and We're not going to do all of the exercises because it's something where it's useful to come back to this later on when you've done a little bit more, when you've revised a bit more language. Um, but here we have a repeat of what we were told on page 16. Um, the perfect tense, it's called le passé composé, le passé composé, the po composed past. And it talks about single events or actions that happened in the past. Normally, if you can imagine you're trying to say, and what happened next? If you can say, and what happened next? Then you normally use the perfect tense because the action is perfected. It's completed and you can go on to something else. So I got up, I had my breakfast, I packed my bag, I went to school. All of those are single events that happened in the past. Why is it important? Well, it's something we do all the time in everyday speech and mastery of those tenses is vital, particularly for GCSE French and the higher levels. The perfect tense is the key one that you need to know. There are other past tenses, but the perfect tense, the passé composé, is the main one you need to know. So what do you look out for? Um, it has two parts, the auxiliary part, verb and the past participle. What is one verb in English, we walked, has two parts in French, we have walked. And make sure you never miss out the auxiliary verb. So if you remember that little song from Beko, you have stolen. If you can remember that, tu as volé, as volé, as volé. What I rather like about that is it's really stressing that auxiliary verb, you have stolen, have stolen, have stolen. So maybe that you're going to remember it always, the tu have volé, have volé. So you do need that. Nous avons marché, avons marché, would be the equivalent. Apologies if you um, don't like my singing. <laughs> the perfect tense then has two meanings in English. So il a joué pour Arsenal can mean he played for Arsenal or he has played for Arsenal. So if you want to translate he played or if you want to translate he has played, you always have that il a joué. It's, that's something where French people have to learn. When do I say he played and when do I say he, he has played? Um, normally you tell them that if there's a time involved, if you can say last year, it'll be last year he played for Arsenal. Whereas if there isn't a time, you just say he has played for Arsenal. When it's used with a negative, it can also be translated two ways, as in il n'a pas joué 
for Spurs means he didn't play for Spurs or he hasn't played for Spurs. So you can see it's not necessarily that straightforward. How does it work? Well, the perfect tense is formed using an auxiliary verb plus the past participle. Most verbs use avoir as the auxiliary. J'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. And then to form the past participle of a regular verb, what happens? With ER verbs, if they're regular, you remove that ER, you add an E accent, becomes changé, il a changé. He changed or he has changed. If in the infinitive it's an IR verb, like finir, to finish, remove the IR and add an I. It may seem a bit odd to say that. You could just say remove the R, but somehow to say, well, you've got to remove the last two letters and then add something is sometimes a good way of learning it. So remove the IR, add an I. Fini. On a fini. We have finished or we finished. And if it's an RE verb, like entendre, to hear, remove the RE and add a U. Entendu. J'ai entendu. I heard, I have heard. I'm always intrigued when I teach this to think, how did this evolve? What was it that made some words go in this way? Um, I mean, obviously, quite a lot of the roots of French come from Latin. Um, but it's it's an interesting an interesting study. So those are your regular ones. Now, there are lots and lots of irregular verbs, and they're ones which have irregular past participles. And if you look on the verb tables, you'll see them all. But here are some common examples. And again, it's quite interesting to think, why, why was it? Why are there some which became irregular? And often they're ones, when you look at them, you think, mm, you probably people have said it a lot. They're very, very common. So as people say it more and more, sometimes it can change. People just find shortcuts, perhaps, for ways of saying it. I don't know. But here, boire, to drink, is not an R as it would be R-E, boire, it's bu. Voir, not uh, not like an IR verb, voir, which would be odd, but odd anyway. It's vu. Lire, it's not liu, it's lu. Croire, not cru, but cru. Pouvoir, pu. Devoir, du. Vouloir, vu. Avoir, eu. Dire, dit. Écrire, écrit. Mettre, mis. Prendre, pris. Être, été. Faire, fait. Um, so here's an example. I said, j'ai dit, she saw, elle a vu. If you're not sure what all these means, mean, don't worry, I'm going to be giving you all um, a sheet which has got all of them written down. And also, if you look at the back of the book, you can see them. So there they are. They're the ones that I've just been talking about. With negatives, there, you have to remember that the nupa, the bit that makes it negative, goes around the auxiliary verb. So, she has seen the film, elle a vu le film, ce film. She hasn't, elle n'a pas vu ce film. I have finished, j'ai fini. I haven't finished, je n'ai pas fini. So, there are three lots of exercises. Just Let's just look at the first one. And can you change these regular, so you're, they're not catching you out, these are all regular ones and I've written down here so you can remember how to change them. Can you change them into the perfect tense using the pronoun given? So even if you don't know what these mean, see whether or not you can write them out and remember ever so important that you have got this extra bit there, j'ai mangé. I think sometimes people have difficulty with this because we often teach you first of all how to do it in the je form and it doesn't sound like two words does it? J'ai sounds like one. Where it's, it is je ai. I remember when I was taught French, we always started with the third person, first of all, so that if you were asked a question about your understanding, what's he doing, he's doing that, we were both using the word he, rather, what are you doing, I'm doing. It's quite difficult. So there it's much more obvious. He has eaten, il a mangé. You can hear the three parts. She has eaten, elle a mangé. You have eaten, tu a mangé. So just be aware of that. When you're ready for the answers, resume. Answers coming up now. So, je parler, parler is an ER verb. So you're going to have that ending with an A and with the je, it's going to be the same as that, isn't it? So, j'ai parlé. Vous, un grandir, grandir, an IR verb. So it's going to be grandi and vous avez grandi. 
Google a new verb, <laughs> quite recent. An ER verb, what's going to happen there? Ils ont googlé. He um, heard. Il a entendu. An RE verb has a U. Attendre, to wait. You've waited. Tu as attendu. RE goes with a U. We're back to an ER verb. Nous avons oublié. Another ER verb. Mes parents ont apprécié. Another ER verb. On a écouté. An IR verb. So take off the IR and add an I. So I seized. J'ai saisi. And ma copine, my friend. And this is where if you want to give a name or my friend or whatever, then it's the same as the third person. So ma copine a copié. So that's revised the verbs taking avoir. There are also verbs which take être. Okay. So um, the auxiliary verb être is used with some vital verbs. You really need to know these. Um, and you absolutely need to use the perfect tense with être to say things like I went, we stayed. So those you're going to use quite a lot. Hopefully you're not going to use he has died very much. Things to look out for. Um, all reflexive verbs use être in the auxiliary verb. So you have come across those before. To get up, se lever. To wake up, se réveiller. To go to sleep, to go to bed, se coucher. There are only a further 13 verbs that form their perfect tense with être. And if you learn these, then you know that all other verbs go with avoir. Some people use this mnemonic, Mrs. van der Tramp. It's not my favourite way, but that might be a way that you can remember what they are. Um, monter, um, rentrer, sortir, venir, arriver, naître, descendre, entrer, and so on. Another thing is that compounds of these verbs also take être. So look out for one of these 13 verbs with an added prefix. So venir, to come. So revenir, to come back, also takes être. Devenir, to become, also takes être. And the other thing you need to know is that for être verbs in the perfect tense, the past participle agrees with the subject of the verb. So here, you can see here the uh, what happens. You take the part of the auxiliary être and add the past participle. So the ones which take être are aller, venir, arriver, partir, monter, descendre. And by the way, this is the way I prefer to learn them as being opposites. To go, to come. To arrive, to leave. To go up, to go down. Retourner is an extra one. And then up here. Entrer, to enter, sortir, to go out. Naître, to be born, mourir, to die. Rester, to stay, tomber, to fall. And retourner, to return. So I have to say that would be my preferred way of learning them. And they're all, as you can see, they're verbs of motion. I mean, verbs are doing words, I know, but if you're actually moving yourself, you're moving to go, to come, to arrive, there's movement there. Um, the exception to that might be seen as being resté, to stay. If you think of that as being non-movement, you're deliberately not moving if you're staying. This grid then shows you how you add endings if the subject is feminine or plural. So here's an example with partir, to leave. Je suis parti, they sound the same. But if you're female, add an E. Tu es parti, sounds the same. Add an E if the tu is referring to a girl or a woman. Il est parti is always without an ending, but elle est partie always with an ending. We left, on est parti. There you add an E if everyone covered by we is a girl or a woman. Otherwise, um, it's just with an S. Nous sommes partis, again, if everyone, if it includes men and women, or if it's men only with an S, but add an E if there's a, even single, a single girl has to do. Sorry, you add an E if everyone covered is a woman. So even if you had a million women and one man, a million and one people, and there was one man, then you would have an S ending, not an ES ending. Vous êtes parti, so that if it's referring to you, singular, formal, to a male, it has no ending. If it's you, singular, formal, to a female, it's got an E on the end. 
If it's you and it's lots of men and, e and one woman even, it would be an S. And then if it's only women, it would be ES. They left, ils sont partis. They're all, it's always going to be an S because it's always going to be for men or a mixed group of male and female. And if it's just females, elles sont parties for all girls and women. But notice there's absolutely no difference in the way that you pronounce these at all. Then if you've got reflexive verbs, which we'll be looking at in more detail another time, um, you put the auxiliary verb at after the reflexive pronoun. So je me suis couché, tu t'es couché, il s'est couché, elle s'est couché, on s'est couché, nous nous sommes couchés, vous vous êtes couché, ils se sont couchés, elles se sont couchées. So just one exercise. Can you write these in French? And remember to add an E to the past participle if you personally are a girl. When you're ready um, for the answers, resume. Answers coming up. Numéro 1. I went. C'est je suis allé. I arrived. Je suis arrivé. I have fallen. Je suis tombé. And I hope you weren't caught out by the fact that it had the word I have there. This could have been I went or I have gone. I arrived. I have arrived. I have fallen or I fell. I went up. Je suis monté. I came. Je suis venu. I stayed. Je suis resté. I have left. Don't get caught out. Je suis parti. I returned. Je suis retourné. I went out. Je suis sorti. And for some reason, that number 10 went in the wrong place. I was born. Je suis né. And with all of those, if you're female, you have to add that extra E. So, um, I'll give you a, um, this. This is a page which has got examples about how, first of all, an avoir verb would be done, an être verb, and a reflexive. And for each one, there's another little video to remind you about how to form it, which might help you. So that will put into your library in your class notebook. Now look at the same exercise you've been looking at, um, exercise two reading, and chercher, look for, Look for les verbes, verbs, au passé composé, in the perfect tense, dans le texte de l'exercice 1, copier et compléter le tableau. So copy and complete that grid. So first of all, you've got the verb avec avoir, verbs with avoir, and verb avec être, verbs with être. Again, it can be that you could just use it with your, you've all got the textbook, so you can look in there. Otherwise, if you want to do it um, from looking at it online, here's the first bit, um, and then I'll show you the second bit. But look at this first bit now, and can you find those with avoir and those with être? When you're ready for this section, then um, resume, and I'll tell you the answers. So answers coming up here. So, and I'll translate it as we go along. The first meeting, the first encounter. Cédric, an architect, 25 years old, a rencontré, so that takes avoir, met, or has met. Amélie, teacher, professor, 26, pour un rendez-vous arrangé, for a, an arranged date, a meeting. Dis décrivez en trois mots, describe in three words, la personne, the person avec qui vous êtes sorti, with whom you went out. So there we've got vous êtes sorti, so that should be in your être column. Cédric says, Amélie est belle, Amélie is beautiful, gentille, kind, et adorable and adorable. Amélie says, Cédric est Egoist, he is selfish, agaçant, annoying, et ennuyeux and boring. Oh, I'm a bit blunt. Qu'est-ce que vous avez fait pendant votre soirée ensemble? Oh, I've missed that one out. Sorry. Right, I did a quick repair there. So, <laughs> qu'est-ce que vous avez fait pendant votre soirée ensemble? What is it that you have done? Or what did you do? You did. And with questions, we'll have to, we'll do that separately as to how you form a question. But notice that it's what is it that what is it that you did have done or you did during pendant votre soirée ensemble during your evening together. D'abord, at first, good word to know. D'abord, at first, nous avons visité takes avoir. We visited le musée or we have visited, but 
it would be f we visited. So when you're telling a French piece and person, which one should we use? We have visited or we visited. Because it's stating a particular time when it happened, so it's a completed action normally, then um, we visited. That's you know, And then you can say, and what happened next? So first of all, we visited le musée, the museum, où il y avait, where there was, this is the imperfect, which is what we're going to be doing in the next lesson, where there was une exposition fascinante, fascinating exhibition. Puis, then, nous sommes allés, we went. So the red one is the ones which take être. We went. And because it was a boy and a girl, male, I'm afraid, takes precedence. So in the plural, it'll have an extra S, not ES, an S. We went to a pub Irlandais, to an Irish pub, où j'ai vu, where I saw, a match de rugby, a rugby match. À 22h, at 10 o'clock, nous avons mangé, we ate, dans un restaurant. C'était une super soirée. It was a super evening. C'était, again, is imperfect tense. Um, sounds as if Amélie was not in agreement. C'était une soirée totalement nulle. It was an absolutely useless evening. Je suis allée, I went, with être, au musée, with the museum of Excédric. Mais l'exposition était ennuyeuse, but the exhibition was boring. Au pub, je suis restée, I stayed, with être. And because she's female, remember, you've got these extra E's. Dehors, outside, sur la terrasse, on the terrace, parce que je déteste le rugby, because I hate rugby. Nous sommes entrés, we entered into, dans un très bon restaurant. So an extra S, because it's male and female in the plural. Mais nous sommes sortis, oops. Little repair there. So nous sommes entrés dans un très bon restaurant. We entered into a very good restaurant. Mais nous sommes sortis. But we came out, um, or we, we left, really. Sortir is to leave. Mais nous sommes, sommes sortis. We left immediately, immediately. Parce que Cédric, because Cédric. Oh. Resume again. I had got it, but I just hadn't done it in the correct order. Um, but we came out immediately. Parce que Cédric a décidé que, decided that, that's an avoir verb, que c'était trop cher, that it was too expensive, that's imperfect. Finalement, finally, nous avons mangé, we ate, dans un fast food. Top, non? Bit sarcastique, là. So there you can see your avoir verbs and you can see your être verbs. Right, on to part two. If you need to pause now and find them, that's fine. Otherwise, resume in a moment for the answers. Answers coming up now. Alors, qu'est-ce que vous avez mangé? What is it that you have eaten or you ate? What did you eat? What did you eat? J'ai mangé, I ate. So these, by the way, with our of course, un hamburger, a hamburger avec des frites with chips. Et j'ai bu, and I drank, with avoir, un coca énorme, an enormous coke. C'était délicieux. It was delicious. C'était is imperfect. Quand nous sommes arrivés, when we arrived, it's an être verb, au fast food, il n'y avait pas de plat végétarien. There were no vegetarian dishes. Ave is imperfect. J'ai refusé de manger. With avoir, I refused to eat. Je suis parti immédiatement. I left immediately. Takes être. Qu'est-ce que vous avez fait à la fin de la soirée? What is it that you have done at the end of the evening? So, avoir. C'était curieux. So, this is... It appears that um, he hasn't quite got it, Cédric. So, it was curious. And that's imperfect. Amélie est montée dans le bus. So, Amélie got into the bus. And there it's est montée dans le bus. So, she went up into the bus. Et elle ne m'a pas dit au revoir. So there you have, have a text with avoir. Note that the ne and the part go around the a. And this is introducing something a bit more advanced, really, to me. She didn't, to me, say goodbye. So Amélie says, je suis montée très vite dans le bus. I got up into the, went to the bus very quickly. Et le bus est parti. And the bus left, taking être. Je suis rentrée à la maison. I went back to the house. Oof. 
Est-ce que vous allez revoir l'autre personne? Now, this is, est-ce que vous allez? Aller is the future, isn't it? Are you going to see the other person? Je vais revoir Amélie. I'm going to see Amélie again. Je pense que c'est ma femme idéale. I think it's my ideal woman. Je suis tombée amoureux. I have fallen in love. Amélie doesn't agree. Je ne vais absolument pas revoir Cédric. I'm absolutely not going to see Cédric again. Il est tombé amoureux. He fell in love. Mais pas moi, but not me. So if you want a summary then of what you should have written, here are the verbs with avoir and here are the verbs with être. So this particular reading text is absolutely packed full of, um, deliberately obviously, deliberately packed with lots of perfect tense verbs. Page 17, exercise 3, listening. Écoutez, listen, copier, copy, et complétez le tableau en anglais and complete the grid in English. So this is quite a lot here to see whether or not you can work this out. First of all, what do they do? Give as much detail as you can. What was the general reaction? Was it P, positive, N for negative, or both is positive and negative? And why was it positive, negative, or both? So you're looking for opinions as well. Unité 4. Quelle soirée? Page 17. Exercice 3. Écoutez. Copiez et complétez le tableau en anglais. 1. Hier soir, je suis sorti. Je suis allé au cinéma avec des copains et nous avons vu le nouveau James Bond. Mais j'ai trouvé le film plutôt nul. Après le film, mes copains sont allés au McDo, où ils ont mangé un hamburger, mais moi, je suis rentré chez moi, parce que je n'aime pas le fast-food. Hier soir, je suis sorti. Je suis allé au cinéma avec des copains et nous avons vu le nouveau James Bond. Mais j'ai trouvé le film plutôt nul. Après le film, mes copains sont allés au McDo, où ils ont mangé un hamburger, mais moi, je suis rentré chez moi, parce que je n'aime pas le fast-food. 2. Hier soir, je suis allé en ville avec une copine. Elle est venue chez moi et on est parti à 20 heures. On est arrivé en ville cinq minutes plus tard et on est entré dans un café où on a mangé une glace délicieuse. C'était très amusant parce que ma copine est très rigolote. On est allé au bowling, mais après on est retourné au café. J'ai joué au baby foot avec quelques copains. Et j'ai gagné. Hier soir, je suis allé en ville avec une copine. Elle est venue chez moi et on est parti à 20 heures. On est arrivé en ville cinq minutes plus tard et on est entré dans un café où on a mangé une glace délicieuse. C'était très amusant parce que ma copine est très rigolote. On est allé au bowling. Mais après, on est retourné au café. J'ai joué au baby-foot avec quelques copains. Et j'ai gagné. 3. Hier soir, je suis allé au parc avec des copains. Je suis monté dans le bus devant ma maison, mais dix minutes plus tard, le bus est tombé en panne. Je suis donc arrivé très en retard au parc et je n'étais pas du tout content. Pourtant, en arrivant au parc, j'ai joué au foot avec les autres mecs et puis on a dragué deux filles qui étaient là aussi. Une des filles était très belle et très gentille. On a parlé ensemble et je pense que je suis tombé amoureux. Hier soir, je suis allé au parc avec des copains. Je suis monté dans le bus devant ma maison mais dix minutes plus tard, le bus est tombé en panne. Je suis donc arrivé très en retard au parc et je n'étais pas du tout content. Pourtant, en arrivant au parc, j'ai joué au foot avec les autres mecs et puis on a dragué deux filles qui étaient là aussi. Une des filles était très belle et très gentille. On a parlé ensemble et je pense que je suis tombé amoureux.
4. Samedi soir, je suis sorti avec mon nouveau petit copain. On s'est retrouvé en ville et on est allé à un nouveau restaurant chinois. Mon copain a mangé du bœuf et moi, j'ai choisi le poulet. Mais quand on est sorti du resto, j'ai vomi dans la rue. Mais le pire, c'est que mon petit copain a trouvé ça très rigolo. Je suis rentrée directement à la maison. Le lendemain, je suis restée chez moi. Je ne vais pas ressortir avec cet idiot. Samedi soir, je suis sortie avec mon nouveau petit copain. On s'est retrouvé en ville et on est allé à un nouveau restaurant chinois. Mon copain a mangé du bœuf et moi, j'ai choisi le poulet. Mais quand on est sorti du resto, j'ai vomi dans la rue. Mais le pire, c'est que mon petit copain a trouvé ça très rigolo. Je suis rentrée directement à la maison. Le lendemain, je suis restée chez moi. Je ne vais pas ressortir avec cet idiot. So let's go through now and see how much of that you understood. All right. So you could make this into a little challenge for yourself in that you'll see the French and it could be that you pause before I give you the translation. Otherwise, just listen as I go through and translate and comment. Bien. Hier soir, je suis sorti. Last night, I went out. So hier can mean yesterday. So you can translate it as last night or yesterday evening. Je suis allé au cinéma avec des copains. I went to the cinema with some friends. Et nous avons vu le nouveau James Bond and we saw the new James Bond. Mais j'ai trouvé le film plutôt nul. But I found the film pretty bad. Rather, rather bad, rather useless. Après le film, mes copains sont allés au McDo. After the film, my friends went to McDonald's. I sometimes teach that you can say chez McDo. I must check on that. Normally, if you've got the name of a um, of a shop, you can say chez. Perhaps both are okay. Où ils ont mangé un hamburger, where they ate a burger. Mais moi, je suis rentrée chez moi, but me, I went home. I returned to my house, chez moi, to my house. Parce que je n'aime pas le fast food because I don't like fast food. So there we are. That's what they did. The reaction was pretty negative because the film was awful. I didn't like fast food. Numéro 2. Hier soir, je suis allé en ville avec une copine. So last night or yesterday evening, I went to town with a friend. Elle est venue chez moi. She came to my place, to my house. Chez moi. Et on est parti à 20 heures. And we left at 8 o'clock. You can tell from this that it was two girls because you got the ending ES. On est arrivé en ville cinq minutes plus tard. So again, we and it's two girls arrived in town five minutes later. Et on est entré dans un café. And we entered a cafe. Où on a mangé... Oh, there should have been an accent there, sorry. Où on a mangé une glace délicieuse, where we ate a delicious ice cream. C'était très amusant. It was very fun. Parce que ma copine est très rigolote, because my girlfriend is very funny. By the way, when you're looking at these examples, you're also seeing ways in which you can make things a bit more interesting by saying about... You're narrating something and saying at what time something happened and after that happened and then and so on and putting in opinions as well. On est allé au bowling. We went to bowling. Mais après, uh, by the way, I went to bowling probably to the bowling alley. It should have been, shouldn't it? Mais après, on est retourné au café. But then we went back to the café. J'ai joué au baby foot avec quelques copains. I played table football with some friends. Et j'ai gagné, and I won. So there, that's what they did. It was positive, and there are the reasons for it. On to numéro 3. 
Hier soir, je suis allée au parc avec des copains. Last night, I went to park with some friends. Je suis montée dans le bus devant la maison. I got onto the bus. So remember, they say I mounted into the bus. I mounted into the bus. Before. Je suis montée dans le bus devant ma maison, in front of my house. Mais, but, 10 minutes plus tard, 10 minutes later, le bus est tombé en panne. You may not have come across this before. Est tombé en panne. Tombé, to fall en panne, to break down. Je suis donc arrivée très en retard au parc. So, I got to the park very late. Notice the position of the word so. So, therefore, je suis donc arrivée. It's between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. That'd be a good thing if you can see that. Je suis donc arrivée. Je... They could say donc, je suis arrivé. They could put it elsewhere, but that's very French. Je suis donc arrivé très en retard at the park. Et je n'étais pas du tout content, and I was not happy at all. Pourtant, however, en arrivant au parc, you might not have come across this phrase yet. It's a good one. En arrivant, on arriving at the park, j'ai joué au foot avec les autres mecs. I played football with the other guys. Mec, un mec is a guy. Et puis, on a dragué deux filles, and then we, I don't know if, I put this into Google. Google had hit on, picked up, chatted up. I think it really should have been chatted up. Two girls, qui étaient là aussi, who were there too. Oh, I wonder what happened. Une des filles était très belle et très gentille. One of the girls was very beautiful and very kind. On a parlé ensemble, we talked together. Et je pense que je suis tombée amoureux. And I think I fell in love. This is very convenient, isn't it, when you're trying to teach the perfect tense. And one of the verbs is tombé, to fall. You're always getting people falling in love. I fell in love. So there we are. Yeah, chatted up is better than hit on or picked up. Okay, now on to number four. Samedi soir, je suis sortie avec mon nouveau petit copain. So Saturday evening. I went out with my new, and it's not a small mate. Petit copain is a boyfriend. Petit ami as well as a boyfriend. Mon petit ami. So they don't have to be small, but that's the way you express a boyfriend. Petit copain. I mean, quite a lot of people just say mon copain. You can normally understand from the context, but petit copain would be for a boyfriend. On s'est retrouvé en ville. We met in town. This is um, a reflexive verb. Et on est allé. Un nouveau restaurant chinois. So, boy and girl, on est allé with an extra S. You could have said nous sommes allés, but it's quite common to use en for we. We went to a new Chinese restaurant. Mon copain a mangé du bœuf. My boyfriend ate beef. Et moi, j'ai choisi le poulet. And I chose the chicken. How interesting. Mais, but... Quand on est sorti du resto, when we left the restaurant. And by the way, there are quite a few words like that. I um, must get a little collection to show you where they're shortened by having an O at the end, even though the word itself hasn't got an O. So resto is short for restaurant. Um, J'ai vomi dans la rue. Vomit, vomir is to, to be sick, to vomit. I was sick or I threw up in the street, dans la rue. Mais le pire, c'est que mon petit copain a trouvé ça très rigolo. But the worst part is, that's good, mais le pire, the worst part, is that my boyfriend found it very funny, très rigolo. Je suis rentrée directement à la maison. I went straight home directly to the house, to my home. Le lendemain, you might have come across that before, the next day, le lendemain, Je suis restée chez moi. I stayed at home. Je ne vais pas ressortir avec cet idiot. I'm not going to go out again with that idiot or with this. And so, there you have the summary. Wasn't that interesting? And if you need to see the whole lot, it's all there. Now you need to really, really try very hard to get a perfect pronunciation for all the main words that we've been learning in this unit. I'll leave a gap and you fill it with a lovely, lovely French accent. Merci. On décrit une sortie. Describing a night out. Hier soir. Last night. À 20h. At 8 p.m. D'abord. First of all. 
Après. Afterwards. Puis. Ensuite. Then. J'ai. Il a. Elle a. Nous avons. I, he, she, we. Visiter le musée. Visited the museum. Vu un match, une exposition. Saw a match, an exhibition. Manger dans un restaurant. Ate in a restaurant. Refuser de manger. Refuse to eat. Bu un coca. Drank a cola. Dit au revoir. Said goodbye. Embrasser. Kissed. Je suis. Il est. Elle est. Nous sommes. I, he, she, we. Aller à un pub. Went to a pub. Rester dehors sur la terrasse. Stayed outside on the terrace. Entrer dans un restaurant. Went into a restaurant. Sorti. Went out. Parti. Left. Monté dans le bus. Got on the bus. Rentré à la maison. Went home. Tombé amoureux. Amoureuse. Fell in love. Page 17 extras for speaking. Dites une phrase. Say a phrase. Notice that that's the imperative of dire, to say, dit. So it's an um, irregular verb. Je dis, tu dis, il, elle, on dit. Nous disons, vous dites. You say, vous dites. Dites une phrase, say a phrase. Au passé composé, in the passé composé, the perfect tense, pour chaque image, for each picture. And utilisez nous, use nous. So the exercise that we've just seen, is where they were using on a lot. On est allé, on a mangé, on a joué, but now can you use nous? You will definitely get higher marks in French if you can show you can use a variety of pronouns. So it's going to, if it's a verb that takes être, it's going to be nous sommes. If it's a verb that takes avoir, it's going to be nous avons. So have a go now, perhaps um, in pairs, or if you're on your own, say it aloud, and I'll go through it with you in a minute. So get, when, you're, when you've had a little go, then resume and we'll go through it. Okay, when you've done it then, let's see. What would you say for numéro 1? We went to town, nous sommes allés en ville. Numéro 2, we ate in a fast food. Nous avons mangé dans un fast food. Or we went to a fast food. Nous sommes allés à un fast food. We ate a burger and chips. Nous avons mangé un hamburger et des frites. We drank coke. Nous avons bu du coca. We went to the cinema. Nous sommes allés au cinéma. We watched a film. Nous avons vu un film. We ate an ice cream. Nous avons mangé une glace. We played table football. Nous avons joué au baby foot. We went to a match. Nous sommes allés à un match de football. We danced. Nous avons dansé. We got into the bus. Nous sommes, mont nous sommes montés dans le bus. And we returned home. Nous sommes rentrés à la maison. Ou nous sommes rentrés chez nous. Page 17, exercise 5, speaking. A deux, work in pairs. Parler pendant une minute d'un rendez-vous arrangé avec un ami ou une amie. So, talk for a minute about a meeting you've arranged with a friend. Choisissez des images de l'exercice 4. So, you can choose the pictures from exercise 4. I've put them there for you. Utilisez aussi les mots du tableau. Use as well the words in the grid. And the reason they say to use these pictures is so that you're not stuck by having to think about what you actually did. All right, so just practice using this. 
So you can be sort of yesterday evening, went to the centre of the town, we went there, and then, and this. So hier soir, yesterday evening, à 20h, at 20, at 20 hundred hours, d'abord, at first, après, afterwards, and then these connectors, puis, then, ensuite, next, mais, but, parce que, because, ou, where, and then an opinion, c'était, for it was, and then whatever you want to say. Page 17, exercise 6. This is writing in the form of translation. In your writing exam, if you're doing the higher level, you'll have a 90-word piece to do, a 150-word piece to do, and a translation. And the translation is normally of nine chunks. So it's about this sort of length. So traduisez ce texte en français. Um, in this book, it's good. As you go through, they'll give you little hints. So here, what have we got here? Last night I went out with my friend. Look ahead to the last sentence to find out, is the friend here a girl or a boy? Um, in this one, first of all, we went to the cafe. You need to use a nous form for we, a je form in the I ate ice cream, and an il, elle form in my friend drank. So really think about how you're going to conjugate them. Is it with, first of all, is it avoir or être? And then, which of the auxiliary verbs will you use? We went to the café. It's important that you know whether the café is le ou la. If it's le café, it's going to be au café. If it's la, it would be à la. And here, I got on the bus. Remember, you can't always translate the word for word. For word, for word. In French, you use that phrase, to go, I got up into. Do you remember? Beginning with an M, what the verb is, is for getting up into the bus. So pay special attention to the perfect tense verbs. Check when you've done it that every single perfect tense verb has got two parts, part of avoir or être and the past participle. And check that where it's a verb which takes être, the past participle agrees with the subject. And that's particularly important when you're using the pronoun je if you are a girl. When you're ready for your answers, resume. Answers coming up now. So last night, I went out with my friend. Hier soir, je suis sorti. And depending on whether you're male or female, it will be I or IE. Avec mon ami, avec ma copine. So there, it's a female friend. So therefore, it's got an extra E. And we knew it was female because it was with her dad. Mon ami. Ma copine. So, ami will always sound the same whether it's male or female. Mon ami. But the ending's in E. This one sounds different. Ma copine. Masculine is mon copain. First of all, we went to the cafe. D'abord, first of all. At first, nous sommes allés au café. So, there you would have, if you're already a female, and the other one's a female, you're going to have ES. But if you're writing this as a male, then it'll just be an S. Where I ate an ice cream. Où j'ai mangé une glace. And my friend drank cola. Et mon ami, or ma copine, a bu un coca. This sometimes catches people out because people learn. J'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. And they think, oh, what do I do when it's mon ami? So remember that if it's my friend, if it's a noun, then it's going to be a third person, like the il a ou elle a. A bu un coca. Then we went to the cinema, puis nous sommes allés au cinéma. Again, two girls, ES, girl and a boy, just an S. Where we saw a James Bond film, où nous avons vu un film avec ou de James Bond. It was really good. C'était vraiment top ou extra. That's the imperfect tense. Afterwards, après, mon ami ou ma copine est allée, and she's female, so it does have to have that extra E there, au restaurant avec son père, with her dad. But I got on the bus, mais je suis, do you remember? It was monté dans le bus. I went home, et je suis rentré à la maison. So that's quite a good little phrase there, a little, sorry, paragraph. Where if you can really learn that and learn how to write that, you're going to do so well in your GCSE. Because the speaking test, sorry, the writing test for the 90 word and the 150 word, um, they're open-ended. So you can often choose what you put into your writing. And if you've already managed to master being able to 
form the perfect tense and know the show here that you know the difference between avoir and être and you know that the être verbs have endings that will really take you a long way page 17 exercise 7 writing écrivez write une description d'une soirée parfaite ou désastreuse so either perfect or disastrous evening utilisez les images de l'exercice 4 ou vos propres idées to use the images from exercise 4 they're here or your own ideas if you do use your own ideas do check that those verbs and whether they take avoir or être so really use your imagination on this one that would be great if you can you can draw on all of the transcripts which you've had from this and i'll also um, there'll be a substitution table that you can use and the vocabulary section this unit has given you loads of resources, loads of material to be able to answer a question in theme one. Parle-moi de tes activités avec tes amis ou ta famille. Tell me about activities with your friends or family. You've already answered A in the previous one when you were talking about plans for a future outing. But now you've got enough to be able to talk about B. Est-ce que tu es sorti récemment avec ta famille ou tes amis have you gone out recently with your family or your friends? Of course, I'm very interested to know about whether or not you've gone out and to find out what you've done. But I'm also particularly interested in knowing, can you use the perfect tense in order to describe it? And what you've done in this unit is you've gone way beyond um, just talking about the perfect tense. You've also been learning ways in which you can express it in an interesting way. So I've put together a model answer and then I've put together a substitution table which is going to help you to put something together. Remember, you're going to be writing an answer now, typing an answer. You can always come back to it during the whole course because you'll learn loads more and you'll want to put other information in. But let's just get something in the bag now. So here's a what I call a model answer, written um, with the idea that you will have done a bit more than you've done at the moment, but I think you'll probably be able to understand this anyway. So. Est-ce que tu es sorti récemment avec ta famille? These pages we're doing 16 and 17 are critical here. So here I've put a little starter. Oui, malgré le fait que je dois beaucoup travailler en ce moment. Yes, despite the fact that I have to work hard at the moment. Je vais vous donner un exemple. I'm going to give you an example. Or you could say, par exemple, for example. Le week-end dernier, last weekend, je suis sorti. If you're female, you put an E. I went out avec ma famille, with my family. So you're showing off. I know, to do a time phrase, I know a verb, which takes être. Nous sommes allés à Londres ensemble. We went to London together. Here it's showing, I am, it's not only je I can do, I can also do nous. So changing the pronoun. Uh, par le train, you know how to express um, means of transport. We'll be doing more of that later. But I'm sure you've done it already at Key C2. D'abord, le matin. First of all, in the morning. So, you know, set a time frame. On s'est promené le long de la Tamise. We walked along the Thames. Puis, so time indicator, d'abord, at first, puis, then. On a mangé dans un petit restaurant. We ate, and there you've used the new form for we. Here it's showing, actually, I know I can use on as well to mean we. On a mangé dans un petit restaurant. Not just in a restaurant, you've chosen to describe it. You've chosen to show you know an adjective. And it's an adjective which was not only they follow the noun, this one comes before. In a little restaurant, dans un petit restaurant. L'après-midi, in the afternoon. So again, you know, we've had time phrases, le week-end dernier, d'abord, puis, l'après-midi. Nous sommes allés à Oxford Street pour faire du shopping. We went to Oxford Street. And this is good in order to do shopping. I haven't particularly been teaching this to you. But just be aware of this phrase, in order to, for, to do something. It's an infinitive construction. They love infinitive instructions in the GCSE. Puis, so again, sequencer, then le soir, in the evening, nous sommes allés au théâtre. We went to the theatre. This is nice. Où nous avons vu une comédie musicale, where we saw a musical. So here you've got a lovely connective. Not just we went to the theatre, we saw a, comed uh, a musical, but we went to the theatre where we saw <clears throat> a musical comedy. Even better, qui s'appelle, which is called wicked. So you've got what are called subordinate.
phrases here. Enter theatre where we do that, which is called. Opinion. C'était une excellente journée. It was an excellent day. And this will be coming on later in the um, module, the reflexive. Nous nous sommes beaucoup amusés. We enjoyed ourselves a lot. On s'est couché très tard ce soir. Là, we went to bed very late last night. So in this particular unit, we haven't really been looking at the reflexive as much. We've been looking at verbs which take avoir and verbs which take être. Um, but we haven't looked at the verbs which take être, which is reflexive. But never mind. Here's a resource which I've put together to help you create what will get you high marks at GCSE if answering the question, did you go out recently with your family or your friends? So here, I've got a model text here. And why is it model? Because it ticks all the boxes for this mnemonic TIXA. It includes T, time indicators, T, tense, I, intensifiers, like very quite, I, infinitive constructions, C, connectives, S for subordinate clause, clause and A for adjectives. So before I go through it and translate it, just see how you can build this up. So first of all, we'll have an introduction, a period about when you went out and with whom. So just generally. So last week, last week, I spent the day with whoever. So you've got all of the possibilities you could have of when and all the sorts of people you could have. So if you could look at my example, le week-end dernier, j'ai passé une journée avec mes copains and I added a subordinate clause. It's always good to just put who are called. Like that gives you your tick for a subordinate clause. Qui s'appelle Jane A. David. The next thing is that when you're describing your day, keep on talking about the movements that you made and at what time you made those movements. So it could be a particular time when you made the movement or, you know, what the sequence was. Because all movements are verbs which take être. So it's really showing off. I know the verbs of movement where I'm moving take être. So always talk about leaving somewhere, going up into something like the travelling, arriving, meeting up, go into, leave, return, you know, go back to or even stayed. So that idea of keeping on saying when you're moving from one place to another. So if you look back at the text, uh, Sunday matin, je suis partie de la maison. I left the house, je suis monté dans le train, I got into the train, je suis arrivé à Londres, I arrived at London, on s'est retrouvé à Leicester Square, we met at Leicester Square, then on est allé à Oxford Street. So all the way up to there was all showing off these être verbs because it's all the movement, the motion before you actually do the thing which was où on a fait les magasins. So you've got that for the sequence of movement and then it's the what you did. And did you notice the way I say, we did that, I went to Oxford Street, where we did something. Ooh, on a fait les magasins. You could have said, and we did the, the we went for the shops. Um, sometimes meh fits in as well. And these activities where it isn't to do with motion, they often take avoir. So, um, and notice as well that I'm just at the moment giving you how to say it in the first person, I, but also in the we, but you can vary it between on a and nous avons. That makes it good. All right, so getting back to here. Um, C'était excellent parce que j'adore la mode. So that's giving an opinion. It was excellent. And that opinion is naturally bringing in the adjective excellent. And then justification. Parce que j'adore la mode. Because I love fashion. So there... I've done this little table, city it was, and I just said excellent just now, which I didn't, I didn't put there. Uh, you could have said it was a little bit, what it was quite, with excellent actually just has to be excellent, doesn't it? <laughs> but anything else you could um, justify, uh, sorry, um, change the intensifier, and then giving the reason, parce que, because, car, for, puisque, since, vu que, seeing that, so any of those would do. And the example that I've given there is, the reason why you like it, the justification, is because of your particular preference, because I like something. Let's go back here. À midi, so again, giving it the time. On est entré dans un fast food. So there it's the movement to the place we moved to. 
euh, ou where on a mangé un hamburger et des frites et on a vu un coca. So that's where here, where that's what we did. J'ai trouvé ça nul car la salle était sale. <laughs> It's a bit odd there. I found it awful rubbish because the room, la salle, était sale, was dirty. They sound exactly the same. So there, saying where we ate, we drank. And your opinion here is to do with the judgment of the place. So because the cafe was dirty. So before it was because I... I forgot what it was. I like something. I like shopping. That's right. I like fashion. Here it's because the place was. So it could be an opinion about the place. Right, on to uh, the afternoon, l'après-midi. On est monté dans le bus et on est allé à South Kensington. So there you've got your verbs of motion, going to places where, où, on a visité le musée des sciences. So you're getting the idea. Opinion, c'était superbe, car... Il y avait une exposition qui était très intéressante. So, superb. And you could say a reason because what there was and there wasn't. So, we've had before a reason about what you liked and what you don't like. A reason about what the place was like. And this is a reason for what there was or there wasn't. Il y avait une exposition qui était très intéressante. So, if we could just uh, look, look at that. Here we are. So what there was or wasn't. Il y avait une bonne ambiance. Il n'y avait pas d'ambiance. Okay. Uh, quand nous sommes sortis du musée, when we left the museum, it's so again the motion, nous sommes retournés à Leicester Square, we returned to Leicester Square, nous sommes entrés dans un cinéma. So all of this motion, get into the cinema, and there, what did you do? Nous avons vu un film. And then your opinion... Pour moi, c'était un peu ennuyeux. So that's where we've got the intensifier. For me, it was a little bit boring. You could have had assez. Oops. You could have had assez, ou plutôt, ou très, ou trop. Okay. Um, and then you've got, the, again, your preferences for the justification. Je n'aime pas les films de science-fiction. Je préfère regarder les films d'action. So that's giving a justification. It's also bringing a nice infinitive construction. I prefer to watch. Je préfère regarder les films d'action. Then we get again to the time. Finalement, je suis rentré chez moi. That's the movement. Je suis arrivé à 11h du soir. I arrived at movement at 11. J'étais très fatigué. I was very tired, mais très contente. Quelle journée superbe. And finish it off with a what a superb day. So just a reminder then of what each one is. You would start with an introduction. This is what I'm going to talk about. Whenever you're talking about each little section of what you're doing, bring in the time you did it or the sequence, the verb of motion and the place, and then have a connective about where you did it and then whatever it was that you did. Obviously, you know, loads more verbs than this. And then when it comes to opinions, not only say what it was like, giving lots of adjectives, but giving a reason for it here. And here are just some ideas. It can be a reason because what you prefer to do, what the place was like, what the people were like, what there was or wasn't. <laughs>